All right, this review is about solving two-step and multi-step equations. So we're trying to get, whenever it's asking you to solve something like this, it's asking you to get x by itself. Find the value of x that's gonna make this sentence true. It only has one variable in it. I'm not looking for an x and a y. There's not even a y anywhere in these problems. It's just what is the value of x that's gonna make this math sentence true? So the first thing you're gonna do is combine like terms, if possible, on each side. Then you're gonna use inverse operations. So right here I have x, or four times x minus three equals 15. So the operations that are happening is that x is being multiplied by four and that three is being subtracted from that quantity. So not only do you use, instead of subtraction, use addition, instead of multiplication, use division, but you also do them in reverse order. So you're doing the inverse in reverse. So I'm gonna say, in where three is subtracted, I'm gonna add three to both sides. Where x is multiplied, I'm gonna divide four by both sides. On this problem here, we got x divided by three plus two equals nine. So what is happening, x is being divided by three, then two is being added. So doing the reverse in, or the inverse in reverse. So instead of the x divided by three going first, I'm gonna multiply both sides by three, but at the end. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this bottom thing on the list, which is add two is added, and I'm gonna add negative two or subtract two from both sides. Then you're gonna multiply both sides by three. So the order of inverse operations is the order of operations in reverse. That in reverse is a really important part. You can't deal with this divided by three while there's still a plus two over here. All right, so here's an example. In this example, I have got two x minus seven plus three x equals 13. So first step is I'm gonna group like terms together. So I'm going to group them together just by putting them next to each other. Then I'm going to add my like term. So two x plus three x is five x. Now, what is happening? X is being multiplied by five, then seven is being subtracted. So I have to deal with the sevens being subtracted first. I'm gonna add seven to both sides to undo that seven being subtracted. Then I take a look here and the five still being multiplied by X, so to undo that, I divide both sides by five and I'm left with X equals four. Now you want to check your work and this is really important. You can go back to the original problem before you grouped anything, before you changed the order, and you're going to plug in the four everywhere you saw the X. So I'm gonna have two times four minus seven plus three times four, does that equal 13? Two times four is eight minus seven plus three times four is 12. Does that equal 13? So we're gonna say eight minus seven plus 12 and sure enough, it does equal 13. So we need to solve each problem. So what's happening to this one is three's being multiplied times X, then eight's being subtracted and it equals four. So I'm gonna undo the subtraction first and I'm gonna add eight to both sides. And I get three X equals 12. Now what's happening is I've only got the three that's being multiplied times x, so I'm dividing both sides by three, and I'm left with x equals four. So now you need to check. Does three times four minus eight equal four? Does 12 minus eight equal four? 12 minus eight is four, so four does in fact equal four, and it works. I know I have the right answer. For this problem over here, B is being divided by two, then that quantity is being subtracted by four. So this is what I have to deal with first, the inverse operation in reverse. So instead of minus four, I'm going to add the four to both sides. I cannot undo this divided by two part yet. What I'm left with is B over two equals 30. I'm gonna get rid of the divided by two using the inverse operation of multiplication. So I multiply both sides by two. So this cancels out and B equals 60. So what I'm gonna do with this 60 is plug it back in. I know that seems like a really big number, but let's just plug it in and see what happens. 60 divided by two minus four. Does that equal 26? Well, 60 divided by two is 30 minus four equals 26. Well, 30 minus four is 26. Since 26 equals 26, this is the correct answer. If this were a test problem, I would already know I have the answer right. 
These next two problems, this one's one I have to combine my like terms first, so I'm going to group them together first. 5y minus 2y plus 4 equals 9. Now I'm going to say 5y minus 2y, and that's going to be 3y plus 4 equals 9. I, now I have a variable that's being multiplied times a number, and then that quantity is being added by 4. So I'm going to undo that addition with subtraction, subtract 4 from both sides. I will have 3y equals 5. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And then I have y equals 5 thirds. Now these aren't much fun to check, but you do need to check them anyway. So I'm going to have 5 times 5 thirds plus 4 minus 2 times 5 thirds equals 9. So what we have at this point is we have got to multiply this in. So I get 25 thirds plus 4 minus 10 thirds equals 9. So now I'm going to group these two together and get 25 minus 10. It's 15 thirds plus 4 equals 9. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 plus 4 equals 9, or 9 equals 9. That is the correct answer. So although it was a little scary to have to work with the fractions, it still all worked out. This next step starts with the 14 on this side, then the equal sign, and then I've got this 3 outside of parentheses. This means I have to distribute first. So the very first thing I'm going to do is say 14 equals 3x minus 6 plus 5. Then I'm going to combine the like terms that are already grouped together. 14 equals 3x minus 1. I have to do the get rid of the subtraction before I go to the multiplication. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And I get 15 equals 3x, divide both sides by 3, 5 equals x. Now to see if it's correct, I'm going to plug it back in. 14 equals 3 times 5 minus 2 plus 5. Well, 14 equals 3 times 5 minus 2 is just 3 plus 5. 14 equals 9 plus 5. 14 equals 14. Sure enough, this works. So all of my answers checked out. And if this were a test or a quiz, I would already know that I would have 100 on it. Some other ways that you may have to solve two-step equations are to deal with all these fractions. All right. The very best way to get rid of a fraction is to find the lowest common denominator Multiply everything by that number so that there are no more denominators. So if I look between 4 and 3, the number that both of these go into is 12. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. Okay? When I do this, I do 12 times x over 4 plus 12 times 2 thirds plus 12 times 2. Well, if you put into your treated this as 1 fourth, all right, or thought about how many times does 4 go into 12? Or you treat it as 1 fourth and plugged it in your calculator. Either way, 1 fourth times 12, or 4 divided into 12 is just 3. So this whole thing right here just becomes 3x. Then you've got 12 times 2 thirds. Well, you can use your calculator for that, and when you plug that in, it's just 8. And then 12 times 2 is just 24. Now this is something that seems like you've worked with a whole bunch, and it's not really that hard to deal with anymore. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. I'll get 3x equals 16, divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 16 thirds. Again, not a whole lot of fun, but that's what it is. So when I plug in 16 thirds for x, and I put in, again, I'm going to treat this as 1 fourth times x, all right? So I end up with 16 over 12, because six, 1 times 16 and 4 times 3, with multiplication, you just go straight across. So 16 twelfths plus 2 thirds equals 2. Honestly, at this point, all you have to do is plug this into your calculator. The nice thing about these calculators is this button right here. Let me see if I can get it where I can show you. This button right here. So I'm going to take 
This fraction button that I'm going to say 16, I'm going to go down below that and go to 12, click over so I can get a new fraction. But before that I'm going to say it's going to be plus. Another fraction is going to be 2 over 3. And then all I have to do is hit enter and I get the number 2. So I already know that 2 is going to equal 2 and it checks out. All right, so if we're solving these equations back here, and then we've got x over 2 plus 3 over 8 equals 1, well, I can multiply everything times the number 8. So when I have x over 2 times 8 plus 3 over 8 times 8 plus 1 times 8, 2 goes into 8, or I can think of that as 1 half times x, and 1 half times 8 is just going to be 4x, Plus, well, the 8's here will cancel out completely, so that's just 3 equals 8. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get 4x equals 5. x is going to equal 5 over 4. All right, so when x equals 5 fourths, now I just need to plug that back in. And really, again, I'm going to go back to this calculator because I love the way it works. If I truly plugged it back in and said 5 fourths over 2 plus 3 over 8, does it equal the number 1? With this calculator, I can put a fraction and put another fraction in there. So I can say 5 over 4 over 2 plus the fraction 3 over 8 and hit enter and I can see right there that it does in fact equal 1 so it checks out and I don't have to be worried with all the different fractions so with this problem here I'm going to multiply everything times 15 so what we're going to do here is we're going to say 15 times 1 -third, that's going to be 5 times W 15 times 2 fifths and if I'm not quite sure I can say 15 times the fraction 2 fifths and that equals 6 so that's going to be plus 6 and then 15 times 1 over 15 is just going to equal 1 I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides 5w is going to equal negative 5 divide both sides by 5 and I get w is going to equal negative 1 and now I'm going to plug that back in and see if it's true. So what I'm plugging back in is negative 1 over 3 plus 2 over 5 equals 1 over 15. So let's see if that's a true statement. So I'm going to go to my calculator here and I'm going to press my fraction button and I'm going to say negative 1, uh-oh, the wrong button. Let's try that again. Fraction, negative 1 over 3 plus fraction 2 over 5 and I'm just going to hit enter and it shows me that it does in fact equal 1 15th. So that is my answer. It does check out. W equals negative 1. All right and this last one here I'm going to multiply everything times 10 so I get 30 equals 2a plus 5 Okay, 10 times a over 5 is going to be 2a, 10 times 1 half is just 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, 25 equals 2a, I'm going to divide everything by 2, and I get 12.5 equals a. So now I need to check and see if it's true. So I'm going to say 12.5 over 5 plus 1 half, does that equal 3? So now I'm just going to go back to my calculator and I'm going to say 12.5 over 5 plus fraction 1 over 2 equals 3. We're going to be doing some testing on the alarm. So don't be afraid to 